Today I'm going to demo and review a new Lush Gorilla perfume called Emily May. And this one was made uh, by Simon Constantine for his youngest daughter, Emily May. And uh, Simon Constantine has made a perfume after his older daughter called Imogen Rose and that's the lovely rose perfume that they sell in all the Lush stores now and this is one of the new Gorilla Perfume 4 series. The three perfumes that the Lush Kitchen sold were Emily May and I'm Home and Cardamom and Coffee and so um, I'll be reviewing each of these um, in a separate video. So this one's for Emily May. And I had someone on Instagram ask me, what is, why does Lush call it a Gorilla perfume? What's up with the Gorilla name? Well, um, it was kind of a play on words, I guess. Jack Constantine had come up with the, the term Gorilla, which usually means like going against the establishment and that kind of thing. like you know, radical, not following the, uh, the regular powers that be, etc. And so uh, he changed the spelling to the G-O-R-I-L-L-A, like the actual animal, the gorilla, and it kind of stuck. So that's why uh, they named their perfumes Gorilla Perfumes, because they're not just perfumes. They're not just, uh, they're not like commercial perfumes, really. They're um, more about art. They consider these to be art, just as painting or singing or anything else. And they often have their scented cinema in the UK and their guerrilla art house um, projects and uh, a lot of venues in which they showcase different pieces of art and include their perfumes as part of that piece. So it's a, it's a all senses are, um, being um, used at their uh, art galleries and such. So this Amelie May was made with some lovely things. It's made with lavender oil, ylang ylang oil, and rose oil. And so that tells me this smells kind of bright and kind of floral. So now I'm going to open it. So this is the bottle. And this was between 45 and 55 dollars. And this one is sort of a pale golden color. And that's the label in the back. It's a spray perfume, spray liquid. So here's the silver atomizer and you just kind of spray it. So now I'm going to spray it on my forearm. And actually I'm going to do it maybe a couple times and do once on this forearm. So, mm. An initial spray, oh gosh, that's so lovely. You can really smell that bright lavender floral and I can smell the rose. It kind of reminds me a little bit of rose jam. Just, you know, it's not exactly like rose jam, um, the bubble rune and the shower gel that Lush makes very popular called rose jam. But this kind of smells like it, it's reminiscent of it. And, hmm. and then it doesn't list this on the ingredients label, but the description that Lush has on their site says that it has raspberries in it as well. Simon Constantine had asked his daughter, if you could uh, design a perfume, what kinds of things would you put in your favorite perfume? And that's why she said lavender, rose, and raspberries. And I can smell that. Um, it's not a sickly, sweet kind of a raspberry kind of a smell. It's very natural and it's not very, very strong, but it just smells kind of just fresh and natural. But at the same time, it has this very subtle, sort of sticky, sweet, rosy, rose raspberry jam. It's kind of note in the middle. So now I'm going to let this dry for 30 minutes on both arms, and then I'm going to come back and uh, let you know what they smell like. Okay, I'm back. It's been 30 minutes, and that's given uh, my arms uh, time enough to dry down. So now I'm going to give it the dry down sniff. Oh God, this smells so good. Mm. 
Now, naturally, the one I, that I sprayed sort of too light spray smells a little bit stronger than the one I did with one spray. Mm. <laughs> it's, it's, you can smell that rose, you can smell the, the raspberry, and on the dry down, the lavender part of it sort of moves to the background. When you first spray it, and when it's still wet, the lavender is the most present thing. But as it dries down, the lavender takes a far back seat to the rose, and then that raspberry is uh, just a hint of sort of sparkling raspberry in there. It's, it's not heavy, it's not too sickly sweet, it's not too perfumey, it's sort of bright and light and sparkling, but floral and beautiful at the same time with that yum factor of the uh, sort of rose jam raspberryness of it. Ah, I like this. It just smells, it smells sort of yummy but but fresh and light and I really do think that the majority of people that use Amelie May are going to like it a lot. It reminds me a little bit of sort of raspberry soda but it's not strong you guys it's a light you know it's a light whiff of raspberry it's it's not strong at all and it's not way sweet either so it's still light and fresh if you know what I mean so I enjoy Amelie May the scent is still um, medium strong on my arm uh, even half an hour afterwards uh, so that's saying something there are more than a couple of perfumes that I've tried that just literally disappear on my skin after like 10 minutes. But uh, this is not one of them. This has decent average staying power. And I love that I can actually smell the interpretation of Simon's youngest daughter. You know, it, it's a... Uh, I can kind of get a picture of what, what sh why this would be her favorite combination of notes. It's young and pretty and sort of innocent and sparkly but beautiful. And so I would rate Emily May a 5 out of 5 rating. And I would consider this really more of a summer or spring kind of a scent um, and not so much a winter scent. However, Sometimes when it's winter time and it's kind of gray and you're tired of all the cold and the snow and the wind, sometimes you want something that reminds you of spring. So, you know, this might be a good time to wear in the winter time. Uh, but uh, it's, it's nice and I think that the majority of people will like this. And the more that it dries down, the more sort of luscious and sweet it gets, um, at least on my skin. Everyone's skin chemistry is different. Um, you could have 10 people in the same room all wearing the same fragrance, and there will be three or four that smell something completely different than the others. And that's, you know, that's why scent is such a personal thing, and that's why it's such a so exciting when you finally do find a scent that works well with you and that you like. So... If you have any questions about Emily May or any of the new Gorilla 4 perfumes or any of the other Gorilla 3 or 2 perfumes, go ahead and comment below and I'll try to answer as soon as I can. Or you can go to my Lush Encyclopedia blog and find more information on these perfumes and uh, the other Lush Gorilla Perfume 4 series. If you enjoy this video, please like my video by giving me a thumbs up down there. And as always, thanks so much for watching and we'll talk to you very soon on the next video. Bye-bye.